Metro Show every Monday, Thursday, right here on WLINY. One more time. Good afternoon, everybody. You switched mics on me, so I'm used yes. to pressing 11. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, my fault. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Frank Retro Show every Monday, Wednesday. Oh, used to be every... Man, I'm screwing up. It used to be every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Every Monday, Thursday, starting 5.30 Eastern Time, right here from JVK Studios, Long Island, New York, the world, WLANY, America's number one... Forget the internet. America's number one radio, TV station, period. End of story. Not even open for debate. And... So I am Frank Vetro, and that's it. Enough about me. You guys should know me. If you don't, shame on you for not listening. My very special guest today is Doreen. Doreen is uh, a.k.a. the undercover mom. Now, for those of you who um, listen to me religiously, um, you will know. You will recognize Doreen from last week, last Thursday, at this exact time. We were on air, and um, some uh, conspicuously suspicious say that, 10 times fast, conspicuously suspicious activity took place, and we were shut down, basically. Um, now, it's happened before. Power has gone out. Cable has gone out. It happens in the course of time, uh, especially with internet radio. But when that happens, the cable company comes. We call them. They know what's going on. They can see from their end that there's an issue. Same thing with the, the, the power authority. Well, this time around, last week, that wasn't the case. Like, what the hell is going on around here, right? Um, so that's not what happened. I don't know what happened. We know they listen to me. We know they hate me. Do they hate you, Doreen? Um, I don't know. We'll find out. Well, they don't, you're not on, number one, you're not getting invited to their parties or anything like that anytime soon, no, right? No. No. So I don't know what happened, but uh, we... Uh, we got shut down, and, and there's been some uh, some issues. So anyway, here we are again. We'll be damned if they shut us down again. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but if we'll get through it. How about that? And it's an amazing story. So I didn't want to, when we came back, I didn't want to give her just 10 minutes of time. So here comes uh, Doreen. Doreen is here right now. And for those of you guys that are watching on uh, Facebook, we'll get to you in a second as soon as I get uh, get rolling. Okay? So give me... I'm sharing you now. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'll get it to you. As soon as he shares it with me, Doreen. Okay. Get to you. So everybody, this is Doreen. And, uh, Hi. Hello. Um, and we have, uh, we have, we have uh, Tina, actually, in the studio. And we have also... Hi, Tina. And we have... Uh, who's going through her own thing. Um, and we'll, we'll learn about that another day, actually. And then... Somebody's phone is ringing? Sorry. That's Okay. <laughs> I thought it was you. You know, come on. Can we get our accent? No, no, I'm sorry. just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And we have my mother who pays a visit every now and then, Josephine. Josephine Ventro. What up, Mama? All right. Hi. I was I was arrested on my mother's birthday. Oh. I was going to pick her up to go to dinner. Oh. And she was waiting forever and ever. She called the very precinct, which I was sitting, chained to the floor, and they said they don't know where I am. Oh, wow. They knew nothing about it. Remember that, Ma? Sad. Yeah. Anyway, so Doreen is going through a major saga with her son. Um, we'll get the overall gist of it. I'm going to give it to you right now. It's a very important interview. It's going to blow you guys away. Um, so basically what happened um, is her son was arrested. He's, he's in prison right now, eighth year in prison, right? About eight years now he's in prison? Uh, Twelve. Oh, 12 years. He's in prison 12 years now for something he didn't do. He shouldn't be there. And Doreen has been fighting um, not not ever since then, even before then, but since he's been in prison, she kind of took matters into her own hands, um, and did discover did some amazing things and made some amazing discoveries, and now is still in the fight of her life. And what this is what this interview is all about: what she's been going through and how she uncovered evidence that her son, at the very absolute least, he's innocent. Deserves a fair trial. That's our constitutional right. Exactly. And and he definitely never, he definitely, 100%, did not get that, Doreen, right? No, he didn't get a fair trial. So let's go to, uh, hang on, I promised you I'd share this with you. All right, so anyway. Oh, yeah, please share what, so that I can invite Well, why friends. don't you tell us, you know, pre-arrest, tell us about your life. My life? Yeah, how, you, you, your son John, right? You know, you lived in Brooklyn. Yeah. Give us, why are you doing that? I'm listening. We're all listening out there, and I'm going to share this with you, okay? Okay, so, um, you know, born and raised in Brooklyn. I was born in Red Hook. 
um, raised in Park Slope, Carroll Gardens, and uh, eventually moved to um, Prospect Park South. That's where John was raised. Good schools, middle class family. When this tragedy hit. Spike a little bit towards your mouth there, just a little bit more so we can hear a little bit better. Okay. So, um, middle class family, and uh, John was raised in Prospect Park South, went to Bishop Ford, Adelphi Academy, he had a good school. He got arrested when he was in John Jay College of Criminal Justice, studying the law. And, Ironically. Yes. And, um, well, that's pretty much it uh, before this tragedy struck. All right. So he was 19 years old at the time. Okay, when when he was arrested, where were you? Oh, well, Home. actually, he was arrested because of a chain of events that started because he had a party at your house, correct? Right, an impromptu party. They were uh, him and a bunch of his friends were in Manhattan, uh, trying to get into the bars with fake ID, uh, couldn't get in. So eventually, they all came to my house to party, and um, there was this one young man who um, came with one of his friends and eventually wanted to go home. To make a long story short, um, several hours later, he was found uh, sadly shot and killed several blocks from my house. Uh, he had left my house early in the morning to retrieve his friend on Argyle Road and to go home, and um, that's when he was, he was killed. He was, shot. He, he was shot. Oh, yes, he was shot. Five, four, how many times? Five times. Um, Is there any? Was there any reason? The, was there a motive? Was there? Uh, well, was anything found out as to why he was shot? Enemies? Well, the prosecutor uh, during trial came up with five different scenarios on uh, exactly what she believed happened. Five different scenarios is what the jury heard. Five different. Five different. Motives. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Theories. So, um, at the party, um, there was about eight or nine people at the party. Small party. You were on vacation, right? Yes. So I was typical. In... Kids have, you know, right. when my mom was away, I had parties too. Ma, you may not know about them. <laughs> she knows now. She knows now, and the world knows now. But it, it happens. You do that. You know, it, 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 innocent fun, whatever. Um, right. A couple of people left the party. Um, one right. was named Mark. Right. Mark left to get a woman named Angel. Is that right. correct? I'm trying to do Well, this. that was the only f uh, person that he knew that was at the party. That was the one connection, was Angel. Okay. Okay. So he just went to go retrieve her because she had left about a half hour before him with a friend named Albert. Okay. She went to Argyle Road, which is three blocks away. Okay. And what year was this? Uh, 2003. Okay, 2003. So they leave. He goes to... to, to uh, Get, her, get, get, get uh, Angel to go home or back to school wherever. Okay, and your son is at your house. Right. He goes to sleep or something, right? The party's over? Right. Okay. Right. Um, they were drunk. They were all partying. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so when he was killed, the detectives started investigating. Right. Right? It was like a year and a half investigation? Um, well, initially, uh, the detectives that were on the scene were pulled off, and uh, this was about six months later. Okay. and. Uh, the major case squad was put on, and then about a year and a half later, uh, they arrested my son. Um, there was a lot of things that were uncovered, but the jury never got to hear it. Uh, for instance, there was footprints right by Mark Fisher's body. There were bare footprints right next to his body. There was photographs of it, and the jury never got to hear that. The, the public never got to hear that. I actually seen them in 8 by 10 colored photos, and there it was, a woman's footprint right next to the body. Okay. That was one thing. There okay. was several 911 callers. Okay, we'll, we'll get to the, the evidence okay. in a second, because that would be evidence, yeah. withheld evidence, mm -hmm. right, Brady material, mm -hmm. which my listeners know well because I always can't believe... Um, well, how much they withhold things. So I always talk about that. So let's get to that in a second, though. Mm -hmm. um, so they're investigating for about a year, year and a half. No arrests made. A um, couple of suspects here and there. That's right. Right? A couple right. of suspects. Right, um, right. Mm -hmm. So one suspect mm -hmm. was named... Albert? 
Albert. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yes. you don't have to, you know, uh, yeah. you know better than me, well, that's for sure. he was a suspect uh, amongst others because this was at the beginning of the investigation. Exactly, and that's where we're so. at. That's what, you know, we have an hour and 20 minutes left. That's where we're at. We got time. So right. let, let's, let, let's lay this out for them. So okay. Albert was initially a suspect. Yes. Right, why? Well, the body was right in front of his right house. Right in front of his house. Yeah, why not? from his bedroom yeah. window. Okay. And that, as a suspect, he kind of went by the wayside. Uh, they're saying, welcome back on the cover, Mom. I just happen to see that right now. Mm -hmm. So welcome back. They said hi to you, Ma. Uh, <laughs> so Albert, right in front of the house, um, right in front of his house, and he's a suspect. Yes. But that kind of dwindles away a little bit. It does. It dwindles well, away. Well, why is that? Was he ever questioned uh, that, uh, that you know of? Uh, was he yes, brought in? Yes, yes, yes. He was questioned. Yes, okay. and his story changed. Uh, when uh, detectives question you, they uh, fill out reports. Sure. Uh, DD five. Of course. And if you lay out all the reports, because he was questioned several times, the story slowly changed. And uh, as it changed, then he made his way to the jury, uh, the grand jury, and then it changed. And then it changed again once he was at trial. Okay. Yeah. And did anybody try to impeach him? Like, say, listen, you keep changing the story? Like, you, 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 uh, you had an attorney, right? I had an attorney, yes. Uh, there was uh, a lot of stuff that wasn't uh, I mean, he could have been revealed. easily easily discredited. And he was. He okay. was. I have to say that the jury, though, I feel was very, very confused because... All of the prosecutors' witnesses contradicted each other. And um, at first, I always felt like he was uh, the star witness. But as Albert. Yes. Okay. The star witness against my son. But then as time... I'm sorry to inter interrupt you. But as time went on, I started to realize it was really this uh, jailhouse informant that was the star witness. Right. And he completely contradicted all the other witnesses. Just keep in mind, Frank, this whole trial was on testimony only, and it since has uh, yeah, been dismantled. Well, we'll get to the trial, though. Hang on. We're not at the trial yet, believe it or not. Okay, we okay. Have to, we'll get there. I, prom right. I promise you we will get to the trial. We'll, we'll get there. So, Albert, because this is what I want the, the listeners to understand um, and the watchers to understand. Albert um, knew somebody. Like blood related, very close, his mother. Oh, oh, oh. Exactly. That's what I mean. We have to go step by step here. I know it's a lot, right? We'll, we'll get there. So, Albert's mother, right. who was, you tell us, who was well, Albert's mother? She was mother? the vice chair uh, person uh, f for the uh, Republican committee. Okay. The vice chair. And a vice chair person has the authority to hand over what you call a Wilson Pakula, right. which is essentially um, an endorsement. Uh, so, my son was dragged to trial uh, during the election year. And, he, and Charles Hines is the DA. Right. He's in a, t a tough election. It was, that year was a tough year for him because yes. he was going up against a, a very um, smart, uh, well-off uh, lawyer. Okay. And so the Wilson, Wilson Pakula allowed him to basically uh, cross, party cross, par lines. cross party lines. Exactly. Um, and Albert's mother... Gave that endorsed, gave him that. Yeah, but we didn't find this out till like two years of course after not. the well, trial. Of, of course not. I didn't even know what a Wilson Pakula was. Yeah, I, I knew. I knew the pro. Uh, to be honest with you, I knew the. I knew that that occurred, and I knew the process. I knew that it happened. I never put the Wilson Pakula. I never knew the name of it. Okay. I knew it happened. Right. More often than you it's think. It's very, very valuable. Yeah. Um. But after meeting you, I, mean, I found out what it was. There's cases where, uh, I don't want to mention names, but where they try to sell this endorsement for $25,000. Yes. So you could take a seat. They could use it to extort people. Uh, but I just want to say this one thing. They've never gave the endorsement. The Republicans never gave a Democrat this Wilson Pakula before for the district attorney ever until this particular year. And the reason I bring it up, and you brought it up to me, and I want to make sure we got this on, on air so they can follow the story. So um, her son is a suspect. Albert's a suspect. Um, and maybe a couple of other people. Yes. But Albert, you know, put two and two together. Why did he discontinue being a suspect and wind up being a witness against her son? Well, look what his mother did. 
Charles Hines, the DA, knew that. And if anybody out there, especially after listening to me for two years now on radio, if you don't think politics reigns supreme with the DA's office, uh, I, don't know what, I don't know what planet you're living on. Of course it does. Now this guy gets to cross party lines because of Albert's mother. You don't think there's a favor game going on? You know, it's funny that uh, we bring this up. He would only need that endorsement if he lost the primary and he had to cross party lines and then run as a Republican and then get the Republican votes and fuse those votes to win. It just so happens he won the primary, so then he didn't need it, but he got it and he had it in his back pocket. Right. And I proved my point once he lost against Ken Thompson. What happened? He crossed party lines. Who gave him the endorsement? The Republicans, because they had to give it to him because the statute of limitations for murder never runs out. Right. So every four years, they have to give it to him. If they don't give it to him, he could come and indict Albert Cleary. Right. Right. It's, it's like hanging over their head. Exactly. Exactly. So... That's one issue. So he's now, now he's out of the way, okay? Mm-hmm. And my, I'm going to bring this up. I don't know if you're so convinced with this, and you know more about the case, obviously, than me, but um, Angel, her dad used to work for the DA's office, Charles Hines. Right. Whatever, the, whatever that did for her or didn't do for her, who knows? I am a, when it comes to things like this, I always think the worst because the worst happens a lot mm-hmm. so i'm going to say that that did influence somebody somewhere down the line not that she did anything who knows what but it didn't help that her dad used to work for charles Hines and donate money and right and donate money so cash so that wipes out two people and now we got the party at at her son's house and um here we go a year and a half later after the murder right after this investigation right um your son is arrested right Okay. It was devastating. Was there, and, and the only evidence was nothing. Some test, some witnesses. Nothing. nothing. Zero. Zero. So nothing. We, okay. That means I could, I could uh, just say something about you. You could get ar- arrested and indicted. You know, we just had this uh, on Tuesday night on my show with, with an attorney, Phil Giacino, and I was telling Phil, I'm not, I'm not okay with that because Phil was trying to justify it or put it. I'm not saying it's okay, but. And it's not okay. You need more than that. That's Without, right. You, you can't just say, hey, Doreen just punched me in the face. Go get her. I mean, maybe th- that's a start of something, but there has to be some type of investigation after that. Where were you doing? Did you do this? Did you, like, something, somewhere. You can't just take some. Cell phone I mean, records. Oh, my God. You something. Know, cell site. Right. So your son gets arrested. It's a few days before uh, Christmas, right? Right. You were home. You were there when he got arrested. Yes. Okay. Um, so that must have been, I mean. Well, I was a mom watching her son get yeah. cuffed and taken up. Right? Well, I was actually upset with my son because uh, he didn't decorate the Christmas tree. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm sure that went already, away real quick. Yeah. I was complaining that him and his brother, uh, Matthew, weren't, they weren't helping me decorate the tree, and I'm not going to do it, and you need to get home and do this tree. So he was out shopping, and then he came home late. Uh, he invited some friends over. They didn't get there yet. And uh, then I seen some flashing lights outside my window, and uh, I looked, I peeked out, and there's John Spread Eagle on on the car, and uh, they had him in handcuffs. It was so devastating. It's terrible. Yeah, oh, I don't God. want to cry on your show. No, no, it's your son. It's your life. Your life's never been the same. I mean, right. that's what they do. And and you wonder how these people sleep at night. Well, the answer is they unfortunately they sleep like babies. Um, yeah. Because they have no soul. Well, you know, it's about that perfect record. It's about can they get the conviction, and they'll do whatever it takes to get it. And that's all. They'll do whatever yeah. it takes to get it. They will lie, cheat, and it's, steal. It's really true, and that was very hard for me to believe that because this is our justice system. I was oblivious yeah, good, to what was really going on. Good wins over evil, right? The truth, the truth comes forward. You know, the DA's office here in Suffolk County, uh, the, court, the, his, the, the front page of his web, the DA website, I believe it says, uh, the duty of a DA is to uh, a prosecutor is to seek truth. Not victims. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, that is such a lie. Yeah, good luck with that there, one. Listen, we have to keep in mind there are good and bad everywhere. There are those good prosecutors. It happens, yes. Right. And there are those good detectives. We have to keep that in mind. Yes. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we don't, I always say this, and I, I'm almost tired of saying it, uh, but here I go again. I, I, I don't, we're not painting the picture with a broad brush. Yes. And unfortunately, just like in school, it's like every aspect of life, 
the few get the attention. I, yeah. Most of the time, listen, they're all guilty people locked up. You know, right. They get their man. Uh, you know, <laughs> The trick is when they don't, their refusal to say we messed up, we made a mistake. They're, they're just adamant, like, like, and not, you know and, and not, is. and not only that. When they, when they realize that it's, they don't have the right guy. They force the issue. They'll bury the evidence. They won't turn over what might set you free. It, it, they shred it. It's crazy what they do instead of just saying, "Listen, this is a human life." Like they let, will be more respected if yes. they were to say, "I screwed up." Yes. Well, but, you know what? You know what? One of the issues is though. Your, this was a high-profile case all over the the papers, all over the news. It was everywhere. So any prosecutor who took that case is going to make a name for themselves. That, exactly. That, and that's one thing. And number two, and they'll use it to rise through the ranks. And number two, so it's a notch in their belt. Once you're all over the media, you know, it's, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Right. Now it's like, now we have to get them. It's, we're talking about lawsuits now. Now we, we better be right. We better. Better get that conviction. Yeah, we better get them to convict or a plea deal. Get them to admit something because if not, we're in big trouble. He's all over the media right, now. Right. So once they do that, they'll do. That's what makes them do. If, if listen, if nobody knew about it and no harm, no foul. Okay, you, you know, forget it. Go home. And you weren't all over the place. And there was no stigma. There was no nothing. Maybe. Maybe. Right from the beginning, it was a high-profile case, and, and that and that makes them that backs them in a corner if yes. they're wrong. Where they have to get that they, conviction, they have to, or else, and that's an issue. The way they use the media, and then when it backfires, forget it. Truth be damned, you're 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 going to be guilty, like it or not. Right, I know it firsthand. And if they don't have the evidence, they will create it. And in my son's case, they created the yes. evidence. There was zero. Yeah. So can I just tell you what happened? Of course. Wait, where? Which one? No, don't no. get don't jump too far ahead. We're getting there. Okay. What they, do you want to tell? The trial? Yeah. Don't get there we yet. We got the trial. Okay. Okay. I tell you what. So, um, so your son, so your son is, is there eight months later. He goes to trial. He's in Rikers Island. There was guys sitting there for two and three months. Right before the election, John was dragged to trial, which was eight months. And uh, the whole case was on testimony only. So that means, you know, he said, she said. And uh, now, uh, 12 years later, they came forward, said they were threatened and coerced. Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay. We're, we're not there Sorry, yet. We're not I'm there eager. yet. We're at the I'm, trial. Uh, we're at the trial. So okay. your son goes to trial. Yes. Okay, how long, how, one week, two weeks, how I, was the I'm trial? I'm thinking it was, it was like a one and a half week. One and a half week yeah, trial, okay. About, about. Okay, a lot of witnesses, a lot of... No, not a lot of witnesses, but detectives got up there and lied, and, you know, uh, John's uh, girlfriend got up there and lied. And, and let me tell you right now, everybody, and this, this definitely isn't about me, and we, we have one listener saying, uh, listen, if you have to cry, cry at your son, and it must be tough on you. Um, thank you for coming forward. Uh, you have a lot of support out there, which you knew. Uh, I think you knew. Like, you have, yeah. you have when a big... did they hear the whole story? Yeah, yeah. And we're going. They're going to gonna be sick to so, their stomach. Um, They're going to hold on to their kids, boy. Um. So, you have a few detectives lie, and let me tell you something right now. And it's not about me, but I just want to make a point to everybody. So I'm going to bring up my case for ten seconds. In my case, they falsified documents. They we got that. They do yeah, they doctored evidence. Yep. And my case was only a misdemeanor. Here's my point. Um, they lied, they they stole evidence, they destroyed evidence. They admitted this to the judge. They're above the law, you know. Um, they did all this all this stuff. They used, they illegally acquired evidence um, that wasn't admissible. They didn't even count in court. They did all these things and left me for dead over a misdemeanor. So what do you think they would do if they had the wrong guy for a murder? If they did all that to bury me over a lousy misdemeanor, they'd do anything for a murder if they had the wrong guy. And the jury don't have a clue. And they, exactly. They, they only know what's yeah. given to them or what can be told to them. And exactly. they believe in our justice system, and they believe the prosecutor must be telling the truth. Right. Well, your juror... And they're lying. And we'll get to this later, too. Wait till you hear... Why I your, went your, undercover. Well, your juror had more issues than that. I yeah. can tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, so anyway, scary. Okay, so uh, we can have trial. Did your son take the witness stand? No. 
He did not. He was advised not to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could have been a good move. Or, but I he don't wanted know. to. I don't know. I'm sure he wanted to. I mean, I don't know yeah. if that's a strategic thing, and I right. don't know enough to. Um, I don't know if that would be a good move in his case or not. Sometimes you don't I need to. I think it would have been a good. It move. It would have been a good move. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so he. But wanted we had to. to take the advice of the lawyer. Oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, what we're paying that, him for. He's the expert, right? He's the expert, exactly. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you go to trial. Uh, how long did the jury deliberate for before they convicted your son? I think an hour and a half. Only an like, hour and a half? Yeah, it was so quick. It was under two hours. It was like an, an hour, an hour and a half. It was really quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have one listener saying that they consider being a detective just another job, so some of them will do anything to move up in the ranks. And that is a fact. That is a fact. Um, so in, in, in about, uh, within hours, hour and a half, um, your son's life um, was altered forever. And um, your life altered forever. And what, did, what was the sentence? I can't, see, I can't spit it out right now. Okay. Um, okay, but so far he's locked up for... Um, that's how... Look, look what these people life. do. These he people. got life. He got life in prison. He's yeah. doing 12 years right now of, life, of a life sentence. He's yeah. in so far for 12 years. And then, any, any hope of release? We're going to get him exonerated. Well, With the help of his lawyer. Okay. His lawyer, Mark Bettero, is phenomenal. Good. He said to me over and over again, this is not right. What they did to your son is not right. And he's going to fight. Um, so the three witnesses... One was his ex-girlfriend. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so his ex-girlfriend said what at the trial? Okay, at the trial, well, first you have to keep in mind that she was questioned and brought in and interrogated for, uh, four times. Well, let's not get to that. Just when she's on the witness stand, we'll get to that. All right, cause, but that's going back. So you want to go while she's at where, trial. Where? What did she say to, that helped convict your son? Uh, she said that my son gave another kid a gun to go rob and, and kill this, this poor kid. Okay, so... One witness gets on the stand. Young woman says her son gave this man the gun to kill Mark. Right. Okay. No, no, to rob him. Oh, to rob him. Right, to okay. rob him. Right. Um, and that was one theory. It was a robbery gone bad? Correct. Okay. It was a robbery gone bad. I remember reading something about he was shot after getting $20 out of an ATM. Was that part of that theory? Yeah, that was another theory, right. Okay. Uh, he went to uh, get $20 and then... Uh, John's co-defendant uh, was upset and killed him for the twenty dollars. Uh, there was another theory where at the house, uh, Mark Fisher sat on a table, and that upset my son. And uh, initially, Albert at the grand jury said, "Oh, hang on, we'll get to Albert. Hang on." Well, he said that my son was upset because Mark sat on a table, and then when he was at trial. His lawyer got out of him that, but wait a minute, at the DD5s, you said it was another guy who was upset that he sat on a table. And you switched it around and you made it John, my son John Juca. And he confessed that he lied. Afterwards? Yeah. Okay, we're not afterwards yet, though. Let's stay here. We'll, sorry, we'll, sorry. We'll zing it on him in a second. Hang on, hang on, okay. hang on. Um, so, so the table theory, the, $20. The, 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 the Lor Lauren says... That's his ex-girlfriend. Gets on the stand. He gave this man a gun to rob Mark. Mark correct. Okay. Albert gets on the stand and says he was mad. Uh, no, because it was uh, a gang initiation. Oh, it was a gang uh, initiation, yeah. and that's why he did it, your son. Uh, he gave the gun to He gave to the gun. Okay. The as, pa guy. as part of a gang initiation. To, to get him to be a part of this gang that was called the Stratford Stray Cats, to be a part of it, you had to get a body. I got you. Yes, Thanks. which does, which is a typical gang initiation. Um, and then there was the jailhouse liar. Liar. The jailhouse liar. So he said something he said, completely different. Yeah. So um, we'll get to what happened with him because I'm amazed by that whole thing. But we're going to go to commercial break, everybody. You listen to the Frank Vetchel Show. We got Doreen, a.k.a. the undercover mother, in the middle of an intense, heartbreaking story. Wait till you hear what she did. Coming right up right after this. Back. Right now, John is on.
What were you thinking? I only had a few drinks. And then drove home, really? Look, I'm sorry. Not as sorry as you're going to be. Okay, so now what? I guess we get you a lawyer. Great. You know how I feel about lawyers. Listen, Kelly's husband used Phil Giacino and Associates. She said he was fair, honest, and made sure that Jim had the legal representation he needed. I don't know. Listen, Kelly said Phil Giacino is an ex-Suffolk County assistant district attorney with over 24 years in practice. (laughs) Really? Practice? Couldn't get it right the first time? You're joking. Facing fines, losing your license, and even jail, and you're joking. You're right. What's Phil Giacino's number? Smart man. Let me look at my phone. Okay, 631-588-3155. Tell me again. 631-588-3155. Where's his office? 2780 Middle Country Road, Suite 208 in Lake Grove. Oh, right over by the Good Steer. Yes, great place for your last meal if you don't get Phil on the phone. Mistakes happen. When they do, you want an attorney you can trust. Philip J. Giacino is that attorney. Give Phil a call at 631-588-3155. That's 631-588-3155. Or check out his website at www.jacinolaw.com. What did Phil say? Told me not to worry. Got an appointment with him for tomorrow afternoon. Good. Now I'll get this little honey-do list for you. A little community service. Maybe I should call my lawyer. Still joking? Give me the list. An extraordinary story of a real-life David versus Goliath is told as Frank Vetro, a young charismatic principal on the rise of the educational system, has his life taken away like you won't believe. In Standing on Principle, Vetro provides a first-hand account in real time of an innocent man in the justice system and details the tedious struggle to clear his name. You will never hear another story like it. It broadens from local themes right here on Long Island to global themes of social political importance. Learn the struggles of Frank Vetro a career was lost, as well as employment and his home. For more information about the book, go to frankvetro.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Frank Vetro Show. You like your original music? I do it. I do. I do. I like it. It threw me off a little bit, but no, it's good. Yeah, that's your original music now. There All you right. Go. All right. We're going to get John on the phone. Just give me a second. All right. Hang on. All right. Let's talk. So we'll do a little recap. And by the way, while we, we, um, John, actually, Doreen's son actually called in during the break. So we're going to try to hook him up and get him on air here. Um, meanwhile, guys, I'm going to give you a little, uh, te- if you text internet radio, text internet radio, the words, in- internet radio to 31996. To three one nine nine six. Frank, we're gonna have to do this a little crazy. John, I'll, I'll have to relay some messages to John here, but go ahead. Okay, you, go ahead. Uh, anyway, check three three one nine nine six. You'll never miss another show. Okay, uh, John, can you hear me? John, go. What do you want? Uh, to, a little bit. He can hear. Uh, yeah. you, what, what do you want, John? You want him to tell a story, Frank, or what do you want? So, so John's calling in. John, how you doing, pal? I just want to know how you doing right now. How are you doing, John? Not too good. Uh, you know, I'm a little stressed out. You know, I'm trying to manage as best I can under the circumstances, but it's not easy, you know? Yeah, yeah. What? So, it's been 12 years now, right? Is that correct? 12 years now, John? Yes, yeah. A little over 12. About 12 years and three months. So, how, how, do, you, how do you stay upbeat? How do you stay positive um, be, being where you are right now? To tell you the truth, uh, you know, I try to work out as much as possible, study, and just really pray, you know, I try to keep hope alive and, and just, I, I used to see the thing is I used to really believe in the American system. I used to believe that it worked, but that was because I didn't really know any better. And now that I've had experience with it, I see that, you know, it's far from perfect, even though it may be the best criminal justice system in the world, it's still, uh, you know, there's innocent men that go to, go to prison as collateral damage. Because nothing's perfect, you know? But, uh, so I just really, I try to keep in mind that my mother's out there fighting for me as best she could, trying to expose the truth. And I'm hoping and praying that people are, are going to see uh, what really took place and what went on behind the scenes in this case. And I think that if they do, then I can expose this, then I have a much better chance of getting justice. Yeah, and, and I think your mom's doing. I think I think your mom's doing a great job of that on the outside for you, no question about it. Um, she loves you, of course, and we're all rooting for you. So uh, you got, you know, you know, going back to when you were arrested, you know, how was the inter? You know, it always interests. You know Frank, hold on, just one second. I got an idea. Hang on a second. 
I'm going to let his mom hold the phone. Oh, okay. And what you can do is just hold the phone. Frank, he'll hear Frank, and then you can hold the phone up. On okay, the John, can you hear me now, John? He can hear you through the phone. Go ahead. John, yeah. you can, okay, John. So, better, what, better, yeah. yeah, okay, so what was the interrogation like when you were arrested? Yeah, well, sir, you can hardly call it that, but to tell you the truth, they didn't really want to hear so much of what I had to say. And uh, more importantly, it's they had tunnel vision from very early on, and that's what caused uh, a lot of the stuff to happen. You know, that wasn't the only thing that, that got me wrongfully convicted, but I think that that was one of the big reasons I was wrongfully convicted is because um, not only cops were prosecuted and uh, the tunnel vision. What they did was they didn't really just take the facts and see where it led them. They they tried to uh, you know like force a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, they. Well, what, so you, what you're saying? Because believe me, I can relate to this um, a lot. Um, when they took you in, they already knew what the outcome was going to be. It didn't matter what you were going to say, what they questioned. They knew where they were taking you at right. the end of the story. It didn't exactly. matter. Yeah, exactly. believe me, I, I know that well. Uh, how, how, how long, if you can remember, how long about was the interrogation? How long did it last? Uh, I don't remember exactly. A few hours, you know, something like that. Okay, okay. The but, time uh, you walked there. Yeah, it was... Most, most, uh, yeah, I went there on my own. I went there, but more, like I said, more importantly, it was that they had this, you know, they had the, the tunnel vision played a huge role. And what I found out a lot of stuff years later, things I didn't know then, I come to find out years later a lot of things that came out. Yeah, what, when we, we can, and we can, and we, and we could get to that. What, would, what it was it like being on, being um, at the trial and listening to your ex girlfriend say the things she said? What, how, how did you feel? What did that do to you? It shocked me to the core, really. It was so bad, you know? I did, really didn't think that. And you never think that, you know, something like this is going to happen to you, you know? Yeah. You see things on TV, true stories, on Dateline, 48 Hours, and all this kind of stuff, but you never really understand what a person goes through until it happens to you. You know, I was just totally devastated. It turned my world upside down. And, uh, you know, I was on the verge of a breakdown, basically. It was that bad. You know, I couldn't imagine that this would actually come to pass, and it did. And, uh, like I said, years later, I found out why. She was pressured so bad that there were nights that, you know, she wanted to be, uh, go into law enforcement herself. She wanted to be a federal marshal. And they put so much pressure. There were nights she studied so hard in school and worked so hard that she would cry. That's how hard she was working to achieve her goals in life. And they were going to rip that all away from her. They were going to pull the rug right from under her unless she said what they wanted to hear. So you can imagine the type of pressure that's put on this young 20-year-old girl, 19-year-old girl, whatever she was at the time, right. to just get her to say what they wanted to hear. Right, know? right. No, no. Tell I them about the affidavit. Her affidavit. So years later, she came forward, right? Like, what, about three years yeah. ago? About three she years ago, something like that? She recanted a statement? Yes, yeah. She finally told the truth all these years. And I didn't have contact with her all these years. All these years, we didn't have any contact at all. So how, how, how did she come forward? Like, did, uh, who spo like what happened? How did, how did she finally find it in her conscience to say, wait a second, I, I can't do this? I, I mean, well, she did it, but I have to, like, do something to help him out. Like, why did she come forward years later? I gotta go. I'm sorry. The CEO just came up to me and said they want me inside. I gotta go. All right, buddy. Yeah, don't get in um, trouble. I got to go right now. Yeah, I'll try to call back if I could. Good luck, buddy. I love you. Good luck. All right. He's so what? He's probably going to get in trouble. Is he going to get in trouble? I think so. Oh, my God. Okay, so bring us forward. Um, All right, so so she she comes about three years ago or so, two thousand maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. 2014, 2015, she came forward with the Ooh. affidavit saying what John basically said, how right. she was threatened, coerced, the whole nine yards. Right, with the support of her husband. She had moved on with her life. She okay. got married, she had a little baby, and she was done with it all. And this weighed on her. And, and that's why she came forward. Okay. Yeah, her um, husband helped her. What? Good for him. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, she said, uh, essentially what she said, and you read the affidavit, that um, they said to her that um, she was never going to work in law enforcement, and uh, 
they had some personal information about her that they were Nicol uh, Anasiga Nicolazzi, she was the prosecutor. And she said that she would expose this personal information if she didn't cooperate. And she was a young a uh, Catholic Italian girl that looks up to her dad and she felt she would be totally humiliated if her dad fa found out this information. So that kind of broke her down. And in addition, uh, a detective had pulled his chair up to her and said, listen, Lauren, if you just said that John gave the gun, it's not so bad. It's not like you're saying he killed the guy. You're just saying he gave his co-defendant the gun. It's not so bad. So Lauren, at the age of 19, didn't think it was so bad and it would get her out from underneath this pressure, this interrogation that they were, you know, giving her. So she said, okay. She testified that John said this to her, thinking it wasn't so bad. When John got 25 years to life, she was devastated. And then she found out in the summation a summation is the end of court uh, when you're tying everything up. Right. Anna Siganakalazi tells the jury. The prosecutor. The prosecutor tells the jury that Lauren had nothing to hide and she told the absolute truth. She vouches for Lauren. And in the meantime, it was an outright lie. So now Lauren gets to read this many, many years later, and says, I'm the reason why John got 25 years to life? I'm the reason? Right. Ah, uh, this is insanity. I lied. Right. And it weighed on her for many, many years. Right, I'm sure. Because when you, like you said, when you're a young kid, even, listen, I was a high school principal, and you know, I was 34 years old when I was arrested, and I didn't know, like, the, the system and what was going on. Like, it's hard. Never, never mind... A 19-year-old. So, oh, no. so, so definitely, I can imagine that. So let's get, so she recants, comes back, she, she's sick to her stomach. She she says, no, this is not how it went down, blah, 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 all right. this stuff. Um, then, how about that jailhouse informant? What was his name now? Avito. Okay. Uh, John? John? John Avito. John Avito. Another John. John Avito. He, Avito. What did he say on, on, on the witness stand? What did he say? Forget what he came... Oh, on the witness stand, what did he say? Okay, on the witness st stand, he said that, um, oh God, he overheard John's father say uh, something during a visit at Rikers Island. He had a, a veto had a visit with his family. And John, my son, had a visit with his father, his aunt, and his stepsister. And a veto claims he overheard a conversation take place, uh, which was, what did you do with the gun? Uh, this was totally impossible, Frank. Totally impossible. Well, don't say that why yet. Okay, so he, now, years later, again, same thing with him. He came forward with an affidavit, correct? Yeah, he okay. came forward. Um, I read that affidavit also, and that intrigued me more than anything, upset me more than anything, because when I was reading that affidavit, I mean, he was in trouble with the law himself. Right. Okay, so he was basically about to get arrested and, and do time. Yes. Well, um, his judge um, remanded him to, uh, to a drug program, and he warned him, or she, it was, a, it was a female, she warned him that this is it, Avito. If you screw up here, you're going to jail for three and a half to seven years. You need to do good, because he went to drug program after drug program after drug program. So... He screwed up. He absconded. They put a warrant out for his arrest. Okay. So instead of, uh, you see, it's all in the wording. Uh, Anna Siga Nicolazzi told the jury at my son's trial that he uh, came in voluntarily on a warrant. When, in fact, he didn't go to his judge or his probation officer or his drug counselor. He went to her. He, went to a de he called a detective and then went to her saying that he had information so that he didn't have to do the three and a half to seven. So she took him and walked him to his hearing, to his judge, had an off-the-bench conversation with the judge, and then he went home instead of going to prison. Now, the way it works, uh, if you... If you 
that John's co-defendant and Mark Fisher went to get $20 and came back. So he or she is vouching for the truthfulness of John Avito, the jailhouse informant, when she had to have known that he was lying because the body was not found in front of the ATM. The jury wasn't putting this all together. I'm sure the jury was confused. The body was found three blocks away from my house, five blocks from the ATM, and in front of Albert Cleary's house. That's not to say Albert Cleary did it, but she had to have known that her own witness was absolutely lying. Right. So we have, uh, we have prosecutorial misconduct. Serious. All, all, all the way. All the way. But now these witnesses, why did, why did John Avito come forward? The jailhouse, the, the, the man who violated probation and lied. Well, why did he come forward? Because he came he forward in like 2015. No, in 2015, he, he, he came forward with an affidavit. Oh, uh, why? well, there was some investigation going on, and uh, our private investigator, Jay Salpeter. Who we had on not too long ago. You guys remember that? Uh, Jay Salpeter went to go talk to him, and the guy just broke down, and he said he's been, wait, you know, this been weighing on him for years, and uh, he feels absolutely terrible, and uh, we had one man, you know, he, one of the one of the listeners said, "What the DA did to your son um, is murder," and you know, yes, it is. They took his life. Yeah. Yes, they, it is murder. Yeah. And and where's the accountability? Where do, do they are they held accountable? No. Right. They could do. What are, they lie, they cheat, they do whatever, they coerce, they threaten people, they fabricate documents, they lied about phone records. And they move on to the, and what they do is they move on to the next case. There's no, you know, and, and what happens in situations like this is an innocent, an, an innocent uh, man or woman gets locked up. The real culprit's still out there. Maybe another, another victim in waiting because the real murder is out there and the family of the person murdered the victim the real the victim there's no real closure did you really with all this misconduct that the project all the fishes know do, do they do, i mean they is, know yeah is they're they, not stupid yeah like they, there's really no closure for so really there's no closure for anybody but these prosecutors that perform this misconduct there's no consequences there's no nothing so they just move on to the next case and you have all these victims out there it's a, it's a pile of dust, and they don't care. Next case, and they don't do it again because nowhere else in the world is there a job where you could screw up like this without any consequences. Right. It is just amazing. This whole thing about immunity is total trash. Yeah, no, that's bad. That's it's total trash. They, they, they literally, they I, I, I really want to say literally. It's not literal, but it, it, it you know, they get away with murder. They do. It, it's disgusting, and they know they can. So they do it. Right. The bad ones. Right. Okay, the bad ones. Um, right. So now we jump. I, I, I did. I kind of fast forwarded. Even before these witnesses came forward, you did something which I, I still think is amazing because I heard, I actually heard what happened. Uh, what do you got? My son's calling. I don't want him to get in trouble. get in trouble. I feel terrible. I, I, I'm in the back of my mind, as we're talking, I'm like, man, I hope this kid ain't in trouble because of us. Uh, well, I can tell you what happened, okay? During trial, okay, uh, you, you, there's always the lunch break. And uh, my brother, Eddie, and my husband, Frank, at the time, mm -hmm. they overheard this. One of the jurors said, I, I say, uh, I could sure use a blunt. So my brother, Eddie, came over to me and said, see that guy over there? And he was a juror, remember? He said he, said he could sure use a blunt. And at that particular time, I was like, what, what the hell is a blunt? All right. I think it was a blunt. Okay. Yeah, it was a blunt. And, um, and he's like, you know, it's, it's pot. Yeah. And I said, what? He's going to get high and deliberately, deliberate over my son's case? That's crazy. So I went and I told his lawyer, and his lawyer was like, whatever. Uh, it's not like he said he was high. He just said he could sure use it. So I kind of forgot about it. And then about... Then the verdict came. I was devastated. I couldn't believe that they came back with guilty on nothing. Uh, there was nothing. All testimony, everything was contradictory. So how can you come back with a guilty verdict? Uh, so 
About two months later, it gets back to me that one of John's friends sat at one of uh, the proceedings, and he recognized one of the jurors, but he never said anything to me. He had gotten thrown out because he didn't know he wasn't allowed to be there because he was on the witness list. Okay. Nobody told him he couldn't go and see. Right. So he got thrown out. About two months later, I hear that he recognized one of the jurors. And I said, who? And he described them to me. Eventually, I tracked them down. But I knew that he was. But at first, I hired some investigators. I hired two private investigators. They took my money, Frank, and they didn't do anything. Oh, but I know that story, they too. They didn't even go and call him. Nothing. Uh, I know. So I said, you know what? i got to do this myself. But at that particular time, I was overweight. Uh, you know, I was just a mess. So I said, he's going to recognize me. So I decided to transform myself. And, uh, and that's why you're telling your viewers that I had all these different names. My name is actually Doreen Quinn, and my marriage name is Juliana. So I just switched it to D. Quinn. Okay. So in actuality, that is my name. Right, right. So uh, I decided that I was going to confront him and maybe possibly get him talking about what went on behind the scenes. And uh, I did. I, I lost like 10, 15 pounds. I dyed my hair blonde, blonde. You know, I worked out every day. I put on the fake uh, eyelashes and fake nails, and it was it was a scene. You did all this to confront the jurors. Yes. Okay. Juror. Juror. Saint, right. Okay. So you Jason. do. So, so you. So you did this transformation. Was what did you do this about a month or so? Like, how long did this take before you oh, decided? Oh, it took months and months and months. I don't remember. I kept trying to make contact with him. He wouldn't even look at me. I uh, kept wearing shorts, riding bikes, the cleavage, everything, you name it. Oh, you, you, oh okay. I didn't know this either, everybody. All right, so that's, all right. And it wasn't working. So finally. He so, wasn't interested. So finally. He I meets, said, what do I got to do to get this guy interested? I don't want to know. But anyway, <laughs> finally he meets with you. Uh, actually, his friend whistled at me. He was standing on the corner one day, and I was riding my bike. I remember it was October. It was a beautiful day. And uh, I, was ner I, I was really nervous, and I just kept, I had hot pants on, and I just kept riding up and down the block, freezing my butt off. And then finally his friend Richie whistled at me, and I spun around, and I came towards them, and I was talking to his friend. I had my, total, my back towards uh, the juror, and uh, wasn't interested in his friend. And then he says to me, oh, I, I pretended I was from California. Okay. And I was lost, and I didn't know where the, you know, okay. the good coffee was and where's the... So you start talking to him. Right. And then uh, I said, you know, where can I get some good Chinese food? And Jason, the juror number eight, he was ju juror number eight, he says, uh, if you ever need any ganja, you could give me a call. And uh, I was so nervous, I didn't even know what the hell. How'd he was you get to the case? About. Like, how'd you get to the? Well, that took months later, because then oh, so I you, took so you his forged phone a relationship number. with him. Uh, exactly. Okay. Wow. It was a little crazy, but yeah. I was desperate. I wanted to know why they came back with the wrong verdict. So months go by, you become friends with this I man. I rented an apartment near his apartment. Wow. He lived with his mother. He was like 35, lived with his mother. That was my next question. How old is he? So so you become friends with him. You start associating with him. You, you become friendly. I invited him over for dinner. And then so, somehow, some way, you... I started uh, pretending that the reason why uh, from California to, to Brooklyn was because I was working for this clinic uh, to help the wrongfully convicted. And that opened up the conversation for him to talk about he was on a, on a trial. And uh, he starts telling me about how this kid, um, he, he couldn't, he hated this kid because he was a Jew. He said he was Jewish and I hate Jews and I, that's my right. I, I, and now you got a picture of my face. I'm saying to myself, who? And then I said, I said, who? Who was Jewish? He said, John Juker. I said, he was Jewish? He said, yeah. I said, well, how do you know? He said, well, his last name. Which this is, is amazing. Juker, where he lives. He lives in that Jew neighborhood. 
And I'm like trying to keep a straight face. Oh, I was stunned that my son is in prison because this man believed he was Jewish and he hated Jewish people. But as months go by, um, he tells me so much more than I anticipated. Uh, it was beyond devastation. I was so devastated. So anyway, um, he tells me that his cousin used to date one of John's friends. You know, maybe, uh, Eric, are you with us? Uh, um, he can't hear me? No. Um, Eric. Sorry, I was dealing with it. No, no, it's okay. Uh, when you get a minute, if you could try to pull up that, um, I want to see if we could get these listeners to hear what this woman did. Yep, okay, hold on one second. Yeah, 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 you, right. just let us know when you're, when you're ready. Um, we have a clip of Doreen actually talking to the juror. It's about a minute and 20 seconds long. Okay. And um, it's just amazing how, I hope we could get this going because, and Eric will let us know when he's ready. All right. Uh, because when I heard this, she's actually, you're like playing along, like, and I'm thinking, how is she not, how are your hands not around this right. guy's neck? I'm ready. Are you ready? We're ready. Here we go. All right, let's play this. Here we Listen go. to this. This is Doreen undercover. Hold on. We're not playing here. Hold on. Why aren't we playing? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here we go. I'm going to start her again. Hold on. When I heard the facts of what was involved with this juror, I just couldn't get over it. There was It was almost like a textbook example of juror misconduct. Technically, by law, if I knew I shouldn't be even been in that jury. Like, Why not? When you go for jury duty, they read you a list of all the witnesses. If you know or affiliated with these people in any way, you have to let them know. Allo told Doreen that not only did he know John Juca's friends, but his cousin even dated one of them. And your cousin knows them. I And you know them. And now I'm putting it all together. She knows them. John and Russo hang out with them. them. And I know them. So it's, it's a circle of people. And this was way before the trial. Right. Allo mistakenly believed John Juca was Jewish. I know the kid is a Jew. The kid that supposedly ordered his friend to kill. Who told you he was a Jew? I know he's a Jew. Is this last name? Mm -hmm. Where he lives? No, I'm excuse. I'm prejudiced. You want to? I hate Jews. That would have been perfect for you. Exactly. <laughs> That's how most people get out. So my son is in jail. And you're. Be Jewish. He's not even Jewish. It's just, it's just amazing. So we just heard. Uh, I mean, there was a um, a narrator behind the scenes, but then in between, you heard actually heard Doreen talking to the juror, admitting he. You just heard it, admitting he, it's just amazing. He's prejudiced. He hates Jews, and he thought you so much Jew, just like you just said. Uh, I don't know. Tell you why we lost our juror misconduct. Well, hang on, hang on. So, so, hang on. So that's my next question. Before we, you give it up, you took this evidence, which is. Jesus, I mean, you. What else do you need? In it's the American system, right? I want a fair trial for my so, son. So, so you, so you filed a motion saying, "Hey, look, juror misconduct. Look, look at this. Right. Listen he didn't to this. get a fair trial. So, what do they tell you? You, it, you, you lost that appeal. All right, Judge Alan Maris. Yeah, he was the trial judge. It the four forty motions is what you put in. It goes to the trial ju uh, judge. Judge Ellen Maris refused to hold a hearing on our evidence based on the tapes weren't authenticated. They weren't authenticated. That's your job. We, our justice system is a truth-seeking system. No, truth-seeking system. So therefore, it's the judge's job to find out if this is the truth or not. So you hold a hearing, you drag Jason Allo, juror number eight, in. You ask him if this was his belief. You bring in an expert that... that, that you that get it authenticated by the, the uh, government's... Uh, Experts. Yeah, there's experts. You bring in experts. That's that's e that's easy to do. But he wouldn't hold a hearing, and you know why Frankie wouldn't hold a hearing? Because then the truth would come out. Right. That John didn't get a fair trial. That's right. That the jury was tainted. It's tainted. So he doesn't hold a trial, and he says in his decision, he's gonna. Call, he would like to call upon the legislators to create a law for people like. Doreen, 
Doreen who goes and exposes the truth. And my lawyer said, with all due respect, Your Honor, there are laws. And it's called contempt of court and perjury. And the juror committed it. Obstruction of justice. They everything. protected the juror. But yes. if this was in the reverse, right? if this was in the reverse and my son got acquitted, you bet your ass they would go after that jury, that juror. They would go after him and seeing that the jury was tainted. Right, bring it right back. And just to give a scenario, which comes to mind, and I hope to God the public understands that my son didn't get a fair trial in more ways than one. Prosecutorial misconduct, juror misconduct, and it's very emotional for me. You have a, a bowl of stew, and, and in this stew, as you're eating it, it's delicious, right? Frank, you like stew? I love stew. Okay, and in that bowl of stew, in that bowl of stew, you have a rancid piece of meat. You have a cockroach, okay? And, and you find this cockroach. Do you toss this cockroach out and continue eating the stew? Or do you take that bowl of stew and throw the whole thing out and get a new bowl? What do you do? You get the new bowl. It's the whole thing is and tainted. And that's all I ask. The whole thing's tainted. As an American, she's not even asking for him to be separate. All she's asking is she wants a new trial, a fair trial. I want a fair trial for my son, and I need the public to come forward. I need any other juror members out there that who was on my son's case to please contact Mark Betterall. If you know of any funny business that has been going on in my son's trial. That included Jason Allo or anybody else, please come forward and, and, and tell your story. It's many years had passed and nobody's gonna get in trouble. Nobody's gonna get in trouble. I urge you to help my son get a fair trial. Breaking my heart over here. It's killing and, and, me. And, and you're breaking their heart too. That you know Judge This Ma could happen to anyone. It Judge Alan Maris did the wrong thing, but he was lied to also. I have to say that much. Anna Singer Nicolazzi lied to him too, okay? She went over to Alvito, the jailhouse informant's hearing, and she hid that from Judge Alan Maris. But he should have. He should have held a hearing to get to the bottom of whether my son got a fair jury or not. And I found out later on that he has a horse in this race. His son works for the district attorney. It's just more Judge and more. Judge Alan Maris's son works. And do you think you had a son? You have a son, right, Frank? Would you go against your son's boss? Would you ever go against your son's bo boss? No. His no. own son works for the district attorney. And believe me, he was not going to go against his boss. Right. His boss got the conviction, and he's going to hold it. We got people uh, sorry. telling me, no, no, don't be sorry. They're, they're, they're pouring their heart out for you. And, you know, Frank, asking I'm me, shaking. Frank, can't she get help for her son? Can't the truth come out? Well, well, I'm doing my best here. I mean, well, I'm trying to help Mark her out. Mark Betterall is the only decent <laughs> lawyer that came forward and kept telling me over and over again that this just isn't right. Go to fr go to free John Juca G I U C A G I U C A free John Juca it's all one thing free John Juca dot com go to free John Juca dot com um, can, you know she has a, a a great attorney now with she lost yeah. that motion now th with the juror misconduct with the affidavits that that with the the two witnesses that came forward um, John's ex girlfriend and then that jailhouse piece of dirt no no you know what he he was addicted to drugs i, I guess have to say well you have a better heart than me was yeah they took my son yeah they you took my son you have a better he heart than me he was addicted to drugs he was all screwed up in the head he said i was so afraid to go to jail you read his affidavit I he did. said i was so afraid yeah the guy had the guts he did to come forward jay so peter uh, he got him to come forward the guy just, you know, cried his eyes and I, out. And, and, and cried his eyes out. He asked my son for forgiveness. We have to find forgiveness. Like I said, and and God bless you for that. You, you, you're a better person than it me. It ain't easy. You're a better person it than me. It ain't easy. Because I'm not so lenient uh, on people, you know.
But what about but, Anna Sigga Nicolazzi? How can I find forgiveness for her? If she, you can, if you can, then God bless you for case, that too, because I can't. The case that launched her career, she is now ad advanced her career. She brags about having 35 straight wins. 35 straight yeah, wins. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they all do. It's all about it's all about the numbers. You know, every every DA's office in every county, if it's not high 90s, the percentage of, of victories, then forget it. They, 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 it has to be. And that's why, you know, I wrote it in my book. Going against the DA's office is like going to Vegas, going against the casino. The odds are so they're going to win. They're going to win. Yeah, because they fabricate everything. Yeah, because, and like we said in the beginning, once you're in the media especially, that then forget it. They can't lose that. And they're not going to take the politician's son. They're not going to take the lawyer's son. Right. So here we're in the construction business. Right. So these, that's right. So we had nothing to offer. So these two uh, witnesses have uh, come forward in the past couple of years, and you file another motion. Yes, on uh, prosecutorial misconduct. In 2016. And... That motion failed. Is that correct? No, we're in court today. We're in the appellate court, though. Yeah. We're so it failed in court, though. In the lower court. He, it, it failed. He, the, uh, that's another crazy story. Yeah. That, but, but it, you, so you made he, another, in like 2016, that motion, it failed. Yeah. He focused on the wrong issue. He focused on a veto saying. The judge. Correct. Okay. He said that his testimony is laughable. That's a point. It is laughable. But let's, let's just take a veto out of the equation for a second here. Okay. What did the prosecutor do? The prosecutor did not disclose that he got a benefit and vouched for his lies. She had to have known that he was lying. And all the evidence proves she had to do her due diligence. If you're going to take somebody's life, Absolutely. you do your due diligence and you don't get up there and lie to the jury and lie to the judge just to get the conviction so you could have your 35 straight wins. And what's even more disgraceful is that she is now on television with her own show. Scott Weinberger hired her. What's, do you know the name of that the show? The credibility. Who wants to promote the show? Her credibility I want, I want, is shot. I want to call the show. I want to call her on this show. That's what I want call to do. Call Anna Nicolazzi. I don't even know how you say that name. Listen to me. She will wear a I'm short listening. skirt, I'm a low-cut blouse. She's pretty. Everybody says she's so angelic. She can't be lying. She's lying her ass off. I believe, you don't have to convince me. I, I want to talk to her. That's why I, I want to know the name of the and show. And we can I, prove. I want to contact but her. But the, the, the amount of papers is this high. Who's going to read them? Exactly. Who's going to read them? You mean you can't papers? sum this up in five minutes? That's what everybody I always can't asks. Sum this That's up. what everybody asks. Can you sum it up in five minutes? Her son's doing life in prison. You want her to sum up a, a 12 year saga more than that in, in, in five minutes? You can't do it, guys. No. And, you know, somebody asked me the other day, you know, we have to, what, Frank, can't you help her? Number one, I'm not an attorney. She has a great attorney behind her right now. And, Thank God. And she did a great job on her own. She has it all. The only thing I could try to do it, I'll help you any way I can help you. That's why you're here, and that's why I'm here. That's why I have this show. Help you get the word out, and whatever you need, you know that. But the answer is, whatever I can do, yeah, I want to help her. But, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, But they woman. do this over and over and over again. So, so, you, so you lost this latest motion to, yeah. for appeal in 2016. You're now in the appellate division, and you are awaiting the oral argument. Correct. Right? So you'll get a date and you'll go to a panel of four or five judges in Brooklyn. That's right, exactly. In Brooklyn on Monroe Street, we're yep. waiting to be put on the calendar. Uh, if you want to read um, Mark Betterall's 440 motion, it's brilliant. It lays it out for you exactly what Anna Sigan Nicolazzi did. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's phenomenal. And we're waiting for the uh, district attorney's response. I guess we get to reply, yes, and then we get put on the calendar. And I need your support, people, please. Okay, so they didn't even, they didn't oppose it yet. Obviously, they're going to oppose your your latest motion, and uh, and then you'll reply. I'm asking for a fair trial. And then and that's and that's the that's what's still and it's echoing in my brain right now. You're not all you want is a fair trial in the United States of America, and you got these people finding ways. Like tripping over themselves to find some excuse that doesn't have any merit to deny you that. 
It's well, just I, I, I've been I've been trying to figure. Because then the public would say, "Wow, they're putting away innocent people." Right. We and, would lose complete trust in them. And the more time, and here's the sad. Well, man, I don't want to make this. The more time goes by, the more in the jam they're in. And the more they'll try to do to prevent it. They should have gave it to us on the juror misconduct. We've all heard it. Of course they should have. You guys heard it. I mean. Now the, I found prosecutorial misconduct. We, we all What's heard it. I, I mean, and I, I've listened to that probably about six or seven times. This is probably my seventh time listening to, the, to it on, on air now. The man says he thought your son was Jewish. He hates Jews. It's his right to be prejudice not to mention he said which we didn't really cover that he knew the people involved in the case yeah and you know, if they ask you that in the beginning and you yes. fill out a questionnaire yes. if you know anybody involved and also on tape what he said to me is he read the newspaper every day when the judge told him not to read the newspaper every day not to read the newspaper at all and he and he read it every day um, but let me just go back to Anna Nicolazzi, the prosecutor. Okay, so she brags about her 35 straight wins. My mother's sick to her stomach over so, that. So uh, if she, she has a formula. Each and every uh, prosecutor has a formula that works for them. And that's how they get convictions, like with uh, cell phone records, with coercing and threatening people, get a detective or two up there, and next day, oh, don't forget the media. Just keep feeding the media a speculation, and they report it as, you know, facts. And for a year and a half, the public was reading, my son's a gang member. He's a gang member. Oh, right? So, therefore, they already went in there with, with a, a verdict. You know, it's but I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. To no, okay, it's your thing. Go ahead. So, go. Thirty-five straight wins. I decided that I am going to pull all thirty-five of her cases and see who she did this to. Because if she did it to my son, and I'm sure Nicolazzi put away some really bad guys, and we thank her for that. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of guilty people in prison, and they belong there, but. This one got by her. And if you do not have evidence of guilt, you have to stop yourself and say, nothing fits. And I have to get somebody to lie, uh, threaten people, give benefits to somebody else, get a detective or two to lie, and get my conviction. You have to say to yourself, I need to put a stop here and just throw in the towel. But she didn't. She kept moving forward. And the so more, that means she did it to others. And 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 I'm and, gonna pull her cases and read every one of them. And the more she moves forward, the deeper she digs the hole for herself, and the more she has to move forward for her own good. I mean, a, a, a normal human being doesn't do that. No, but I these couldn't live with myself. Me neither. And they, and most people couldn't. But these prosecutors, they they get into this cycle. And the more they mess up, the more they have to do something bad to cover the mess up. And then it's a cycle. Now I have to do more bad and cover that up. But now I got to do more. I'm in more of a hole. And it just and what gets lost is somebody's son is here. Oh, she, oh, she yeah, he was nothing. I mean, it, 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 winds, it, it winds up being nothing right now. Unfortunately, a lot of times, prosecutors, you read. I'm, I'm sure you read the motions get get before in their opposition and the way they talk. It's like it's nothing to them but a piece of paper. That's what it becomes. Well, wait a, a second. Win. There's a human being here behind these words and these lies that are being told. And God, like, don't ever, don't ever in any profession. I learned this early in my career as an administrator. When somebody got fired, I was sick to my stomach. And my mentor told me, she was a superintendent. She said, Frank, this feeling that you're feeling right now. Because I asked her, how did she do that? Poor girl went away crying. She lost her job. She goes, I'm t I feel sick over it. Right. And she said, but she had she wasn't fitting. She goes, that's that feeling you have, Frank. And this is what prosecutors, judges, everybody needs to know. Media who write about people, don't ever f lose your sense of humanity that there are people involved. It's not just a name on a piece of paper. Exactly. And that, and I learned. She said she said that feeling that you're feeling, how you're sick because you feel bad. Don't lose that. And if you do, you better move on to something else. Oh, beautiful. And judge it. And I never forgot that day when I witnessed this girl girl being fired. I, I always make, I wrote about it in my book, I make this plea to prosecutors and defense attorneys and everybody involved. There's human beings. Yep, the, you're getting paid attorneys and God bless you. And everybody's getting paid and the judges and this and that. But damn it, there's a human being here. And do not take it lightly. Right. And they do sometimes. They just write Next whatever. case, next case. Oh, court, valuable court time. Backed up in the court. The media takes lives. 
They help. Yes. They just keep writing they, whatever. They contribute, and the DA's they office, the DA's office uses the media yes. as the as a, a means to their end. Yes. They will take. They will. They lie to the media. Right. The media and, and has it has to be held somewhat responsible, I believe, because you know they don't investigate. They, yeah, I was going to say exactly. Um, long gone. It's like a lost art, investigative journalism. I know a few that are pretty damn good, though. Yes, there are some good ones left. Um, Hella Winston. Yeah, they're, they're, no doubt. There are Harry Siegel, Hella Winston, Hella, Hella Winston investigated. No matter what you told her, she went out there, pounded the pavement. Now, now, um, one thing I want to ask before I forget is, number one, why didn't, um, perhaps because of the way the media was used and the juror, jury, like, knowing about Kate, the case and stuff like that, maybe your attorney, did, did he try to get the venue changed? Like, go take the trial somewhere, another, out of state or another county, at least somewhere no, where people... No, I remember that, no. Like, come to Long Island, like, you know, I'm sure there's people in Long Island didn't hear about it at the time. No, he didn't. They I wish did. we needed a special prosecutor, that's for Maybe sure. a special prosecutor. Because and no, and there was benefits given to the Charles Hines. And number two, um, uh, poor man's dead now. He seemed to do a lot of good, though. Um, when he was alive, I, Kenneth Thompson couldn't review it, didn't want to review the case? No, no, he did review the case. He did uh, in his integrity... Uh, Conviction integ integrity unit that, right. that, he, that he started up, and he, and he freed a lot of people. Like, he, he, did, he seemed okay. to be doing I have, good. I, uh, well, no? That's another, no good? Uh, uh, that's another whole story. He, yeah, 20 people at that Yeah, particular. but not for you. He didn't... Uh, uh, no, well, they said uh, they investigated it, but you have to keep in mind Anna Sigan Nicolazzi still worked there. So they had to police their own. How do you police your own? How do you investigate your coworker who you've been working with for years? And that's, they said the integrity unit investigating themselves? Exactly. You know what? I don't know it's how that major, works. It's a major problem. She just left like a, uh, yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, we'll investigate. And the person, I'm going to investigate you, Doreen, but I'm going to put uh, the you in charge of your own investigation. No, How is that going to work out? No, exactly. She still worked exactly. There. You know, all exactly. the cases that he um, oh, reversed, uh, Ken Thompson reversed cases of people who did 20 years and their prosecutors no longer worked there. They moved on to defense, uh, they died. So those were the easy cases. As I would say, the low hanging fruit. John's prosecutor. Her office was right next to his office. Come on. I mean, in the same building. She, they work together. Yeah. There, there has to be oversight and yeah. um, accountability. You know, uh, we have so many chairmen say, you know, uh, Frank, just like you said on Tuesday, my Tuesday show, um, there needs to be accountability, and it, it, it there hasn't been there in your case. And it it, it, it's not in a lot of It's not anywhere, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. And if you ask a DA, you know, if you were to ask any DA all over the, uh, New York, uh, anywhere, Hey, can there be an oversight committee? Can, you know, every single DA would say initially, sure, because it looks good politically for their new campaign. They, they, they'll, they'll, they'll run on that campaign. Yeah, we, we'll do that. We'll do. But then, if you clarify to the DA, I always say this: if you clarify, like, well, wait a second, Mister, Mrs. DA, we want an independent body to watch you, not you, not. That's then they're gonna. Oh, well, we didn't say that. And just like you brought up, you're, you're investigating yourselves? No, we want an independent All right, so after body. it goes to the uh, integrity unit, yeah. it's supposed to go to an independent panel of three. And that's what they claimed happened with my son's case, and it was denied, okay? So it went to the independent panel. Now, there was thousands of pages of misconduct, and the prosecutors said that Mark Betterall was allowed to give one letter to the independent panel, one letter. Mm -hmm. And he's like, one letter? There's so much misconduct. It was a, a, a piled up sky high. So he did the one letter to the independent panel. Then, uh, supposedly, they denied it. And then we find out about a year later they weren't so independent that one of the lawyers that were in the independent panel used to work for the prosecutor's office and donated cash to Ken Thompson's office. So how is that independent? Oh, my God. So it really isn't. No. And then we don't know how much information, false information, John Avito, Lauren, how much false information was given to the independent panel. 
and we were allowed to give one letter. Right. Dude, it's not fair. No. It's not fair. Well, I mean, fair. that's putting it mildly. It's not fair. And I, I'm going to say it again because I guess I'm a bastard and I don't really care. And pe- my listeners know I, I don't care. You are showing you know, your heart. You, you're a better person than me, I tell you, because I, I, I couldn't take it. Um, uh, oh, oh, can we come back after for one more minute or can you hold off for one minute? Thank you, Eric. All right, we're going to give uh, g- give us uh, one or two more minutes. Uh, on a, uh, we're coming to an end here, but um, on a, I guess a lighter note, like a better note, which I'm sure you don't even give a damn about, to be honest with you, because you just want your son free from uh, prison. Um, so Vanity Fair did an article on your story, and somehow, some way, one thing led to another, and Sony got in, became interested, or uh, right, studios. Uh, I believe, yeah, it's with Sony. Uh, they're gonna do a movie on. Uh, they call me Mother Justice. Mother Not Justice. Under, yeah, it's Mother Justice. Let's well, have a nice little flow to it, actually. Yeah, because I uh, went undercover. I wore the wire, and uh, you know, I found out my son didn't get a fair trial. And uh, Nicole Kidman uh, is interested, and I just recently heard... She's going to play you? Yeah, and I just recently heard Julia Roberts. Get out of here. Do it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hopefully they can get the truth out there, expose it. I mean, there's not a lot of uh, parts for women actresses. No, there's not. So, I mean, in here they could play possibly Nicolazzi, maybe Lauren... Myself, there is a lot of female uh, parts in this. In prominent roles, not just behind, like... Uh, right, if it gets made. I mean, a lot of this stuff, too, gets put up on the shelf. But Marshall Herskovitz, uh, I believe uh, he wrote The Last Samurai. Yes. Uh, so he wrote it. All right. I believe he's going to direct it. Oh, good. And uh, Vanity Fair is um, The Middle Men. Right. Condé Nast. Right, okay. So um, we have about... I'll give you the last minute. So this is Doreen. Um, you've heard her story. Poor son's behind uh, behind bars for life uh, for something he didn't do. And what she, his mother's not even making that. Well, she's making that claim, of course, but she just wants a fair trial. Yeah, please. That's all. Just treat him fair. It's the United States of America. Um, any parting words you want in the last minute? I'll give it up to you. You got. Let me give you the last minute. You've been listening to the Frank Vetro Show every Monday and Thursday, five thirty Eastern Time. Um, this is Doreen, the undercover mother, Mother Justice. You've heard everything. And we're going we're gonna to give uh, Doreen a copy of this show. I'll have a copy. Doreen, what do you want to... And we're going to keep reposting it in case you missed it, guys, okay? What do you want to leave our guests with? Anything? Last Fight. words? Don't give up. Website? Yeah. Free John Juca. Please, if you are a German... I'll make sure it's on your fa- I'll make sure it's on your show page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Don't Thank give you. up. Thank you, Doreen.